what's good y'all Akil here back with another video and today I'm just gonna share a few clips from one of my previous live shows I usually do my live shows every Thursday 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time but today is actually my wife's birthday so I'm not going live today we're just gonna kick back relax and celebrate her so shout out to my wife drop some happy birthdays in the comment section spread the love but like I said because I'm not gonna go live today I just wanted to continue being consistent and share some value for you guys as well and we'll be continuing going live next week as well so if you guys are interested in these type of videos make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and without further ado let's get into it well question about shipping free or calculated i'm definitely on the fence been for years whenever i look at my item that sold nine times out of ten it's calculated um but for me i just prefer doing free shipping and i just um just add the cost of shipping into the buy it now price and the, the big difference what i've seen with that is that with eBay, they charge you ship it. They charge you for the the final value fee. They charge is based on how much the item sold for. And if you charge shipping, they also charge you a fee on that. So I just decided to in, at least try to save a little bit of money on the, the shipping side of the fees. I just would integrate the cost of the shipping into my purchase price. And the other good thing about that too is that when I was accepting, when I was charging for shipping, I would always accept offers. And Anytime I would get an offer, it would usually just be, you know, they would try to subtract the cost of shipping because buyers traditionally just don't like to pay for shipping. So I would sometimes still accept it and then found myself losing money. So I figured it would just be less of a headache to just include the cost of shipping into the price, don't accept offers, and just wait until the right buyer comes along. That way I don't have to keep looking at my phone and seeing lowball offers and getting pissed off. It just made more sense for me to do it that way. But calculated shipping, I've never really even gave that a try. Like I always did flat rate shipping. So I would always calculate how much the item would cost previous to listing it. So if I knew for a fact this could fit in a padded flat rate envelope, I would just charge like eight bucks because I know padded flats would cost like seven fifty. So I never really did too much um, calculated shipping. But I mean, it, it, does, it, it makes sense. It just either way, you can't go wrong. Let's see. My question is, if we're supposed to get discounted and better views for free shipping, why isn't anyone really doing it? And that's how I feel anyway. Yeah, a lot of people do free shipping. Um, there's a lot of sellers that do free shipping and free returns. I don't do free returns, but eBay was really pushing for sellers to use free returns. So for me, like I said, I just do free shipping. If somebody, if the item doesn't fit, you know, and the, and the person wants to return it, they have to pay for the cost of shipping. And that's just that's just what what works best for me. But I always tell people it's a million and one ways to run your eBay store. I just like showing you guys how I do it. But you know, calculated shipping, all of that type of stuff, free shipping, free returns, it works. How do brother? I have a problem shipping large items like toys. How do you manage those items? Oh, bro, pirate ship. Anything large and heavy is perfect for pirate ship. Um, you got to use that to save money on shipping. I know if it's like a first class item, if it's a flat rate item, it's the same cost on eBay as the pirate ship. But if you're dealing with like a like a really heavy item, most people would say, you know, FedEx, uh, FedEx Smart Post. I used to use FedEx Smart Post all the time when I was dealing with bulkier, heavier stuff. But nowadays, if it's like a big pair of shoes or if it's something just big and bulky, pirate ship is the way to go. So. I did the video on that. So you might want to invest in like some some of those big poly mailer bags to put it in there. But like I said, it's, it's definitely worth it because uh, in my last live show, somebody said they, they did the math and they realized that they saved over 250 bucks using pirate ship as opposed to shipping via, uh, via eBay. So let's see uh, the call out, man. I do no returns. Still sells. Still sells. Still have been good. Um, I mean, I just do return just because I was doing a lot of clothing and stuff like that. And I knew um, a lot of times people would not, you know, just if, if it didn't fit, they would definitely not want to. Um, they would just feel more trusted. They were, I guess they would just feel more comfortable making the purchase if they knew they could return it if the item didn't fit. The other thing is with returns. Um, and this is the tricky thing, too. If the item isn't as described and they open up an item as not described case, whether you accept returns or not, they can still return it. So just by knowing that and taking that in, into consideration, I just said, let me just open it up. But I know there's a lot of people that don't do returns and their sales are still really good. I think it just depends on what you're selling and how much you're selling it for. 
I realized that a lot of those like cheaper items, like thirty dollars and and under, for some reason I will always get a return or item not as described. And it was just those type, that, just that audience. You know what I mean? It's those people that they want a deal, and but they want it. It's like those the people that want that are very cheap always want like the biggest and best. I don't I don't get it. That's what I used to experience all the time. What time of day would you say is the best time to find new sneakers at a store? Uh, honestly, I really don't even know what time because every store is different. There's like three different roses right around me and every one of them restock at different times. So I just try to go, like I said, every day. And I go at different times. Some days I might go early. Some days I might go at five o'clock. Some days I might go at 7.30 right before they close just to see if they're putting out anything new. And that's just what works best for me. At one point before um, quarantine and all this stuff happened, Ross used to stay open late. And one of my favorite Rosses in my area, they used to restock around 530 every day. And now they don't do that anymore. So I just try to go as often as possible, see if I can you know, figure it out. You know, where's the best place to get cheap six by nine poly bags? I would probably go to eBay or yeah, I'll probably go to eBay. I, I probably... Because Amazon stuff is probably a little more expensive, especially if you're going to be, you know, with prime shipping and all that stuff. Um, usually I find better deals on um, on eBay. But you said you don't accept offers. When an offer is made, do you just ignore it or do you reply to the buyer letting them know you don't accept offers? So sometimes I might get an offer on an item that I'm not accepting offers on. They might send me a message. My reply is always, well, honestly, sometimes I ignore it. Sometimes it's just, you know, just whatever. But there is sometimes where they might send me an offer on an item that I've had sitting for a very long time. I might not have changed the price. I'll go back in and check the comps. And for whatever reason, now that item that I priced at 120 is selling for 90 bucks on average in over the last month. And somebody will send me an offer, oh, would you take 90 bucks? If, it, if it's selling for what the market says it's selling for, I would definitely go ahead and accept that. But usually I just ignore it because I try to stay in touch with, I try to like monitor my eBay store and just change prices, change listings, uh, photos, all those types of stuff. I try to do that often. So it's very, very rare that I'm pricing something uh, way off. See, here's a tip. When shipping larger shoes in padded envelope, you can use cling wrap, aka saran wrap, to tightly compress the shoes together to make them fit into the padded envelope. That's the gem right there. Thanks a lot. My man Kevin with another tip. Let's go. Keep them coming. If you're shipping shoes in a padded envelope, but you can't quite seal the end, you can cover the opening with the white eBay branded tape. The white eBay tape blends in with the envelope. My man Kevin, that's what I do. That's the tip I know. But you got all the tips. Thank you very much. That's what I like. I like it. It's everybody sharing tips, making life easier for everybody. That's what it's about. Imagine if everybody did that all the time. Let's see. As a new seller, eBay puts a limit on how many pairs of sneakers you can sell on there. I could list, I could only list five pairs. What? Five pairs? I did not know about that. That sucks. Um, you can always rec you can always call eBay and request for them to like any of those like limits that they put. You can always call and ask, even if you're a new seller. If you call and just ask them, I'm pretty sure they can work with you, especially if you've been making some sales. You can just ask. And if they don't, and whoever you're speaking with, if they don't answer or if they don't, you know, give you the access, hang up, call and call again. And that's all I would do. I literally just keep calling them until I get uh, whatever I'm calling about. I just keep calling. And now you can't necessarily call and get an answer because if you call eBay, they just lead you to voicemail. So what I do is I would put the request in for them to call me. And then, you know, if the call doesn't work, if they don't do what I asked them to do, they'll put another request and get back on the phone. How do you block someone on eBay? I got a low baller. I know it's not personal, but he counters even less than his initial offer. Um, go, go on, just Google block eBay. Google block eBay bidder list. I just Google those exact words, block eBay bidder list, and it will take you directly to the link. And it shouldn't, you shouldn't even need to log back into your eBay account because I have a very extended list of black people on eBay from when I used to accept offers. And I feel like it was just trolls. Like they might have been people watching the channel and they just send lowball offers just to be funny. And I just block them. See, what kind of items are you looking to stop, stock your stores with for fall and winter? This will be my first holiday season as a reseller. So I want to stock up now. Very good question. So I'm definitely focusing on boots, like any type of winter boots, um, winter jackets, 
like puffer jackets, puffer vests, all those types of stuff sell really well between uh, for, like from basically the whole fourth quarter up until about February, March, you'll still see a decent amount of sales coming from winter type stuff. So definitely stock up on winter boots, uh, those vests, coats, um, snowboarding gear, like snowboarding pants, um, the, the snowboarding jackets, Burton. That's a really good brand to be on the lookout for. Like anything related to those type of stuff usually does sell pretty well. Um, come to think of it, I was finding a lot of snowboarding stuff when I was in Santa Barbara because, like I said, it's a very wealthy area. So people probably would go back and forth to wherever the snow was in Cali. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find those types of stuff in thrift stores now, but depending on where you are, you definitely want to check out for those type of stuff because fourth quarter, if you're selling brand new with tags items, this is just me speaking from experience. Last year when I invested a lot of money into UGG like inventory, it took a while to sell because I bought a lot of those stuff in the summertime. But once fourth quarter came around, those stuff was flying off the shelves. And the year before that, I heard people say fourth quarter is huge. So I did a lot of thrifting and I just tried to buy a bunch of stuff that I could find. But I wasn't seeing that same type of return, that same type of action from thrifted items. I didn't see much of a, a increase in sales when I was just doing thrifted. So once I switched up my store and I started having brand new with tags, that's when I was getting more sales. You killed it with those ugly ass. I was, man, it was like, that was the first month where I grossed over 10,000 in sales. That was my very first time doing that. Never forget that. That was amazing. And that was just last year. Like it's crazy how time like changes. Cause I remember at that point I would, I was never seeing 10,000 in sales. Now it's become more normalized, but at that point, psh, boy, I was hyped. Can you explain what exactly fourth quarter is? I have a basic idea. So fourth quarter is the the fourth quarter of the fiscal year. So some, so basically from September to December 31st, I think like September 15th around there is when basically more people are shopping, more people are online because everybody's buying gifts. People usually start buying gifts as early as the summertime sometimes. But during that fourth quarter time is when people are buying gifts for themselves, you know, shopping for their kids, their wives, their, you know, significant others. So a lot of people are just shopping, you know, it's Christmas time. So that's the whole like fourth quarter situation. I just try to be prepared for it because like I said before, my goal for this year was 300,000 in gross sales. And because of, you know, the virus and all these things that came about, I wasn't able to buy as much inventory as I probably would have been getting during those couple of months. So now I'm just trying to play catch up and I think we're doing pretty good. We should hit that goal as long as sales do well during fourth quarter. So as usual, of course, you know, I'm gonna keep you guys updated. When you say you are stocking up for Q4, do you wait and drop them Q4 hits or are you listing them now still? Now I'm listing them now, like everything I'm getting, even if it's a coat, I'm, I'm listing it now. Big coats, big boots, it's going up now because you never know, people might buy it now and then I just get my money back faster. So. Clothing has been real slow. Other than shoes, what do you like to source most? Um, right now, I'm sourcing a lot of hard goods. I'm sourcing a lot of like random electronics. So when I do go to the thrift stores, like I said, not savers, not goodwill. We not going there no more. Um, I would usually pick up like um, those cordless house phones. Those are selling really well. Um, that Bose Sound Dock I just picked up a couple days ago. That one sold within a matter of days. Um, hard, like power tools like drills drill batteries all those type of stuff are selling really well and it's just like something good that i'm trying to just get into a little more just so that i can kind of diversify the store i love the fact that my store is more this looks more professional now and i feel just better about it but at the same time i know how important it is to diversify stuff so that's what i'm trying to do Never offered it. I'm tight and now I'm off this shit.